What's up guys, this is Eric, and I don't really make a lot of videos, but I figured this is a good enough occasion to make one. I just bought a 3D printer. So if you know me, you know I like to do a lot of uh, designing and building. You know, my arcade cabinet being my largest YouTube project, but stuff that you haven't really seen is I do a lot of electronic stuff. Like I built a quadcopter, I've done a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. And I've been doing a lot of 3D modeling since I was a kid, and one thing that I really wanted to do was utilize that 3D modeling skills. And I wanted to get into prop making, doing all kinds of really fun stuff. And that's where the 3D printer comes in. So check this out, it's the Lulzbot Taz 6 3D printer. Done a lot of research. I was gonna get an Ultimaker 2, but then I was like, eh, you know, what, what other options are there? Because that's kind of like the one you see everyone get. And turns out, like, these printers, even though they're less like common to the like new 3D printer user, normally you'll see Ultimakers, uh, but the TAS-6 has a lot of advantages for the same price. So I get a bigger um, build area than like a, a traditional like Ultimaker 2 would. Uh, even the extended, I think maybe could do taller prints, but I can do bigger like overall prints. So this is what I decided to do. So we're gonna do an unboxing here. And you can move, feel free to walk around. My brother Chad's behind the camera. And we're gonna just figure out how to open this. So uh, let's just kinda, it doesn't say on the box. And obviously we're doing our video very raw. I'm not gonna do a lot of editing because I'm too lazy to do videos to begin with nowadays. So if I'm gonna do them, it's gonna be raw, it's gonna be uncut, and it's gonna be real. All right, look at this. So let's talk about Lulzbot. First off, check out our Rocktopus here, our uh, trademark octopus rocking out. And we're gonna do a little bit of a review. Obviously, I'm a first timer 3D printer. I've only seen a 3D printer maybe like a few times at like conventions or whatnot. So this is going to be brand new, like from a newer user perspective, and obviously I'm tech savvy, so I've done like a ton of research on 3D printers, and this printer in particular, so I say if anyone, I'm, I'm already kind of familiar with this stuff, but it's still going to be new for me, so there's definitely going to be a learning curve. So box one, we got toolkit, power cables, USB, SD card, filament. Guide tube, sample filament coil, Lulzbot sticker, test octopus print. Actually, let's look at that now. Because the, I guess before they send, before they send you the print, they do a test print, and I kind of want to see what that looks like. So here's a tool bag. It actually comes with a tool bag with, like, stuff you'll need to maintain and fix problems with your printer, filament guide. And here we go, dude. Little test octopus. Now this octopus was done here. Come here, I'm gonna show you it. This little octopus was done with this printer before they shipped it to me. So pretty slick. Got some stickers, SD card. Got some uh, filament, some test filament. Ooh, actually they give you a few different ones, which is pretty nice. Your first print right here. We got the um, engine, and we have. The Nova 1800, and we have, let me guess, I don't know which kind of, uh, what else there is in here, but a few different filaments, which Lulzbot wants to sell you uh, at a premium, and I actually have some other filaments I bought from uh, Matter Hackers as well. So let's look at this, we got the handy dandy instructions, we're going to definitely look at that, we're going to look at what else we got, box two has... The single extruder head, so we're gonna put that on. And let's see what else we got in here. Just a filler, a piece of cardboard, and the printer itself. So let's um, let's see. I think we're gonna sit it on its side and pull it out. Ugh, shit. Just 
a receipt. I don't know what that is. Something to hold it in place. Let's leave that foam in there. All right. Whew, it's a nice size, isn't it? All right. Take apart all the foam bits. Actually, that's the, um, I think they call it the X or Y axis, one or the other. Alright. Let's take that out. Mess that up. Alright, dude. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch cameras and we're going to set it up on the desk. So see you there. Alright, so we just put together the printer and it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, it's actually right the size I thought it was going to be and we're at the stage where we're going to turn it on. So, first time turning it on, ready? Let's see what it does. Alright, here's some fan or something moving up there. Alright, shoot TAS6, low spot TAS6 ready. That is good. It's ready to go. It's got like a little filament in it, so let's see what the guide says to do. Because uh, definitely nervous. I've never done this before. All right, guys, we're setting it up. We're, we've got everything ready. Really nervous because when it goes to home in, it kind of like crashes into the little sensor a little bit. But we're gonna say screw it and we're gonna hit print. So here we go. All right, so our first print's finished, and it looks all right, but there's definitely some issues with it, so I guess come on in and we'll check it out. Uh, right now, it's still cooling down. The bed is still warm, um, but I'm gonna try and get it off anyway. So let me get my little scraper. Um, and I think it's ready to pop off. Uh, it says it's done, yeah. So come on in and look at this print. You can see on the top some weird shit happened here. It looks like it almost burnt. I don't know what the deal with that is. Can't explain it. But um, I'm not too worried about it because this was kind of a test anyway. So this is going to be kind of difficult to get off without breaking everything. So we're going to just try and pop this sucker off. I'm getting under it. Here we go. All right. So let's check him out. I'm actually got to clean him up a bit because he's got a little bit of stringies, which isn't a problem. And uh, yeah, I don't know what this is. It's like like a piece of dirt or something. Let me get, look under the light. Yeah, you see how it got under there? Like a piece of... I wonder if it was a piece of old filament on the print head or something that got on there. 
doesn't make much sense, does it? But, uh, but yeah, overall he looks pretty good. You know, he's got this little octopus look. Let's compare the two. Actually, let's sit them down. Um, they look pretty good. Uh, this one actually has better layer height. You can see this one's actually done, looks like at the high speed setting, because the layers look a little thicker than this one at the standard setting. So, this one, a little thicker layers, I think. And we're going to do another test print. So, I'm going to take my SD card and I'm going to go and we're going to, we just designed something quick on Blender and we're going to just print it. It's going to fail probably, but we're going to test it anyway since we have extra film it. So, all right. So we just started our latest print. Now you can't see it up here, but you can see it here. Um, I just hooked up Octoprint. So I have a Raspberry Pi here and it's a Raspberry Pi 3 hooked up with Octoprint. Uh, I have it plugged in and it's going to be what I use to manage the printer. I just started a print. I did a quick model on Blender. Uh, my brother Chad, he wanted me to model something real quick and just hit print and see what happens. Honestly, I um, I know it's probably going to fail this print, but you know, whatever. We're just going to do it and see what happens. And really at this point, any failed prints, it doesn't matter because we're going to learn something. Um, and this print's pretty rough. There's a lot of overhangs, and uh, you know I'm nervous it's gonna jack up, but it doesn't matter because this print uh, I think it was like 11 minutes. Well, it says 37 minutes for this print. Uh, is that how long it's gonna take? I don't know, but we're gonna we're gonna try it, and um, I'll get to you. Uh, I guess we'll continue the video after it's done, mm -hmm. and um, we'll see what happens. So we'll be back. All right, so the printer, it's printing, and everything's going really well, actually. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so relieved, because I was really worried that we would suck at 3D printing, and I would have wasted all this money on this printer, but actually, it's been awesome so far. So check out, come over here. This is the first print. Now, obviously, we had the little blemish on the top, which it's still unexplained. It kind of looks like something got into the print somehow, but overall it's pretty great now the second print we did were these balls uh, this one is mine and it, actually I printed this at the fastest speed lowest quality just to kind of see it was a stress test now I didn't print this straight up I actually printed this in two half parts because as you know if I would have just like thrown this in the cure and tried to print it it would have needed support structures but I didn't want to print with supports so what we did here let me grab your ball it's right here um, yeah, so my brother actually has this is a little bit more cleaned up, but we printed them There's a seam down the middle and we printed it in halves and then glued them together and printed it without supports so You can see there's a little bit of artifacting there from where it like had overhangs, but actually Worked really well. His looks really good. I actually designed this in blender really fast just the 3d model just to stress test the printer we wanted to see how how fast we could go from con concept to print. And really fast, actually. You can see, um, he, my brother kind of just uh, was throwing stuff at me. He was like, all right, let's start with uh, a cylinder. Let's do this and this. And we ended up with this exact 3D model. And you know, it looks pretty great. I'm very impressed with how it turned out. And this is on the lowest quality. And the thing is, actually, it has a lot of structural strength. My brother tried to squeeze it. I mean, it's not that big, obviously. Um, but, you know, it actually has a, a crazy amount of strength. Uh, this is the engine filament that the printer came with. And it's pretty great. I actually glued mine wrong. You can see how it's like, it wasn't aligned. Like, if you look at my brother's, how it's lined up, mine is misaligned. Because, dude, this glue, Loctite is like the superest of super glues when it comes to glue and stuff. Um, obviously, there's a glue for every scenario, but this one's like my favorite glue. And like as soon as I touched these two pieces of plastic together, I could not move it. Like I, I thought I could stick it and twist it. No, nope. instantly glued. And <laughs> I actually broke some of the pieces trying to twist it. And then I was like, all right, I'll just leave it jacked up. I don't care. I can reprint it, you know. But my brother's turned out really well, and we had to, we did have to clean these up a little bit with like the X-Acto knife and everything that the uh, printer came with. I had some of these 
um, really nice um, whatever cutters that we were using to clip some plastic bits. But yeah, we're actually running really well here. Come over here and we'll look at what's, what's printing right now. Uh, Amanda, my wife, she wanted an alien. So what we do, uh, I didn't design this alien, but I found an alien 3D model. And um, I wanted him standing up. And obviously it would have been really hard to print like him standing up. I could have done it, but you kind of run the risk of him falling over or whatever. Um, so I was like, well, you know, I'll just print him laying down. So that's what I have him doing right now. And there's actually a little base in the back that he'll stand on. So I, I threw him in Blender. I modified him so he'll, um, once he's done printing, he'll glue onto the um, stand in the back really well. It's a really nice model. He's not that big, but I want to use the rest of the engine I have. And um, so I thought I'd print that. It's a, Hopefully that turns out really well. We'll find out. But um, yeah, 100% satisfied. Now, the thing is, I, my operation's a little bit of a mess right here. But I do want to show you some cool stuff I set up. So first thing is Octoprint. I got it set up. And the way it works, we'll actually show you here. I have Octoprint here, and you can see I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi. I already showed you that. But I can see here are all the uploads I did uh, from my main computer. Amanda Alien is the G code I just uploaded that we're printing. I hit load, here it is, I hit print, and now we're 7% done. It says nine hours remaining, but that's like gross exaggeration. Um, and actually there's a live uh, video feed here of the print. And it's going on right now. You can see uh, it's a great live video feed. Um, and I can manage this printer from anywhere, so I'll be at work. Like, I'll launch a print, go to work, and I can watch it from work. I can see where we're at. I can pause it. I can cancel it if I see it's jacked up, something's wrong with it. Um, so it's it's really a useful tool to have remote access with the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to mount it to the side of the printer. Eventually there's mounting holes here, but right now I just have it kind of hanging out, mounting holes. Uh, there it is. So this is it, and it's hooked up to a Microsoft webcam. I kind of just got chilling right here. And, um, you know, it's this little cheap Microsoft webcam. What I'll probably do is make it a mount, so it'll mount to the um, the plate, the base. That way it the camera will move back and forth with the base, so it'll make better time-lapse videos. And uh, speaking of time lapse, I do have a time lapse of three of these halves that I'll include uh, right now. And so that was the time lapse. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to actually refine the time-lapse settings a little bit just to make better time-lapses. And I also have some LED lights that are going to help with, uh, you know, make them look better and all that. Uh, but those don't come in until Monday. So anyway, uh, go ahead and leave in the comments down below what kind of stuff you think I should 3D print. Um, you know, I'll probably do maybe a custom Raspberry Pi arcade-themed build sometime. I'm not too sure what. Maybe use a Raspberry Pi Zero. A lot of people are making the um, handheld devices, like a Game Boy or whatever. Maybe I'll print a, like a Game Boy enclosure, throw a Raspberry Pi Zero in there, uh, go salvage some buttons from a SNES controller, and then make a actual like playable device. That'll be kind of neat. But in the meantime, this is Fit Dread, and this is my Taz 6 3D printer. Thanks for coming along for the ride. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And that'll be it. Catch you guys next time.